Yo, 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 what is going on, COD Familia? It is your boy BN, aka Mr. Kingdom Builder, and I'm here to give, I'm sure some of you, a much anticipated update on our nasty project slash new Kingdom Star project that we're aiming for as early as May, June of this year for 2024. I'm going to be giving you all the details and everything you need to know, along with why exactly are we starting in that date, um, and how can you join. Okay, so let's start off with probably the most important part, which is why exactly are we starting on may june of 2024 as the earliest opportunity main reason for that is because that's when it is expected that home kingdoms are going to be getting introduced um, i did a video that covered this I think it was my last one and we have proposed new changes on initial servers uh, we have we'd like to provide an update on the progress of new startings for the new starting server design and that we aim to implement the system by may of this year then a month before that in april we'll probably start getting some information so that's why we anticipate it could be as early as may june and there's just a lot of inherent benefits that a home kingdom brings you where really for the most part and i guess if i just to give a few highlights one is that you're able to assess everything in your kingdom from day one as you continue from season to season why because you're able to see every single player that's on the map you can see every single alliance it allows for you to recuperate and to uh, reorganize and restructure yourselves after kvks um, it allows for you to uh, distribute alliances appropriately throughout the region it allows for you to engage a lot more with your players because you have an opportunity to essentially reach out to every single player in there whether that's via synchronized alliance mails or if they come out with some kind of governing system and maybe we get uh, a way to send out kingdom mails to every player there's just a lot of benefits that go into a more positive experience on the day to day right for the average member uh, now let's get to the project itself and bear in mind if you want to get information on this you can click on the discord link there will be one in the pinned comment description down below let's start off with how do you get there so when you join the discord you'll go here to reaction roles you'll select the cod nasty project may june 2024 that's this one here uh, no, sorry, that's Roots of War. Uh, it's the flying dragon icon. <laughs> and once you click on that, it'll open up this area. So I'm going to read through these pretty quickly, starting top down. So we have a start here, which essentially is our table of contents or directory. Just gives you channel descriptions and a little bit of information on each. We have an announcement channel, a chat channel, and then we have a sign-off channel. Now, this is essentially the sign-off is more of your acknowledgement. Right. This goes over some highlighted areas of the project. There's a link or two here. And one of the new things that I actually thought to add in, which, again, some people might just think is pretty standard. Before, we just used to say North America, Europe, and Asia. And most people, for all intended purposes, really knew what a time zone regions they fell under. But one of the things I thought of, literally, as before I started recording this and I was going through and updating the channels, was, well, it'd be nice to attach some kind of a time zone here. So that way, if their peak time zone, which is what I would define as the a stretch of hours that you can be, you know, online for where you kind of are able to have unimpeded activity, right? So you can kind of focus on that time. If it falls under any of these, you can select that. Um, as we do aim to essentially assign players or distribute players based on uh, the majority of their active windows, right? So we'll try and pair up as many NA people with as many NA, as many EU, as many Asia. And this also can allow for you to have 24-7 time zone coverage where you're able to have maximum output during those set windows. Then we get to positions, right? So with positions we have at the moment... And I should be specific here, we're only recruiting for leaders. We're not recruiting for officers. We're not even recruiting for players, even though we have 300 people at the moment that are signed up um, and have reacted. I do reset the reaction roles, so that's why obviously it's a lower number than 300. But we have that many that have already signed up here. Uh, and everyone that you see here, right, is, is an indicator. This is obviously a greater number on the side because these people have access to this channel than what you saw in the reaction role. However, as I said, we're only recruiting for leaders. And that's because... Recruiting for players and members is, is pretty easy in the sense where it doesn't require any kind of vetting or additional screening, right, where you're having to really do a little bit more of kind of one-on-one -on -one or time investment, right? It's just a matter of, hey, people come and join, they read through it, do they like what this project is offering over another? Okay, they go and select one. Uh, and so that's why we're doing leaders first and not officers. Uh, to give you an example, I have actually updated the application, so it's a lot simpler than it, than it was before. I started realizing that we, I was just asking most likely too many questions. And so this is an example of the application that I have here. Um, you can see it's pretty standard, which is, you know, what's your Discord name? Uh, or what region are you in or closest to? Uh, what are your active times on average daily? This actually also helps to figure out which leaders we can... Uh, uh, 
a proportion or sorry, but where we can select or have them fill out better word uh the specific time zone averages that we have when it comes to player distribution what's your age range we have a video to watch uh which is the, my guide video on being a lead and then we just ask you you know what stood out to you in the video um if you have um, any kingdom builder experience you can list that out what's your daily routine as a leader right from when you first log in to log out how do you how do you find and manage officers uh what type of mails would you send out um and then we have two kind of written forms and these ones are actually really important uh, and I thought to add, I thought to add these in after I had gone through a couple. Well, I mean, really, my most recent project I had thought about doing this, but for this one we added it in. And and this is because it is really important how you. It kind of goes into the soft skills thing that I often talk about, right? It's being a leader is much more than just you know uh, playing the game and getting on and saying, oh yeah, hey, I'm I'm cool. I'm gonna go ahead and start this alliance up and run it, right? It, it's it's much more than that. It's really almost more of a managerial role. And so you know the way that you communicate with people is is honestly one of the most important things and probably one of the most underrated things that just isn't talked about enough so i want to see how you go about writing messages in kind of two different scenarios uh, and then we have uh, why join this project over another which project will stand out to you for wanting to join um, and then just a quick reservation here um, that you can ask and, and let us know how you feel when it comes to myself reserving right to make final kingdom decisions um, as more of kind of an act of oversight to keep us on track uh, at discretion right so it's more of if and when necessary uh, but always saying that everything kind of starts and has major discussions at the council level uh, which is pretty much where everything will either start or or end if you will depending on where it comes from right the example is you can have things that kind of come up from officers you can have things that come from player suggestions and maybe they start in an officer chat and work their way up or they start in council and work their way down to officer uh, if you need to include more people for the engagement right there's a lot of ways that that can play out then we get to copy goals and goals is really kind of a, a nice summary of the project as a whole we talk about creation date kingdom conduct uh, zone one distribution uh, sle for strongest lords lots of mges kvks alliances and merging kingdoms mission our mission and values uh, pvp and kingdom slash war games uh, alliance balancing uh, hierarchy objectives um, and then we have plans and plans is more is almost more a little bit more specific on where are we now you know what are what are the things that we're really looking to kind of get out of uh, the experience um, and the kingdom itself and you know how can things play out once we actually land uh, then we get to some cod p resources these do need a little bit of updating for the most part um, this is pretty accurate and still good uh, a couple of these ones i know i do need to update on the hero section um, and i'm going to be adding some more on this alliance management tab because i know this is something that people have been asking me to do after i did these guides because i have some of these for rock but i haven't made them yet for call of dragons but uh, I'm, I'm a very big fan of like condensing things into one channel you don't need a million channels to give examples on how or you know for example you don't need like a million channels on hero guides right you can arguably have one channel on hero guides uh, or have one channel that's dedicated just for heroes right and then you just list them all out you don't need to have a, a channel for each hero to me it's just overly redundant um, it, it, it just feels like it's too much of a clutter um, so I very much like to uh, prioritize <laughs> if you will and simplify uh, then we have a recruit channel this doesn't really need to be posted at the moment because again we're not really actively recruiting for the oh the project as a whole it's only for leaders currently um, and then we have a cod resume i think this is really important um, i am probably one of the few people that i have seen who is pretty much fully transparent with projects that i've ran in the past i also have video references to those projects i also list out all the projects that i was in or i did and i think it's important because regardless of how a project went you can always have a takeaway there's always learning opportunities right and ways that you can improve and develop uh, through self-reflection um, and through continuing and continuing to grind and to assess so this is some information on me uh, what I did in Rock, uh, my time in Infinity Kingdom, and a little bit of what I did in Call of Dragons. And then we have a Town Hall channel. This is basically where we post our Town Hall VODs. Um, and then and we usually have something here which is kind of like a poll. So, for example, you can let us know what times are most convenient for you to make Town Halls. And that allows for us to maximize the amount of people that we can have joining. And also the best way to distribute and uh, communicate that information to a large group of people compared to a small group. Uh, and that pretty much sums up right with where the project is at right now again if you're interested in applying for a leadership position you can join go to cod positions fill out the application 
Uh, and there's some information here. If you have any questions, you can ask us in the Codpea chat or you can DM me if you like. Uh, and yeah, like I said, it's still pretty early stages, um, but I think there's a really good amount of time to prepare for where we are currently. And I'm excited uh, to see where things go. I think, you know, with where I am now versus where I was back when I did the 65 project, the channel's grown a lot more. I think we've been able to, you know, put out some good vibes out there in the community and hopefully do a lot of good work when it comes to how to approach kingdoms, how to approach alliances, uh, being able to engage a lot more with the community on that front, especially with some of the Codby we've been doing on the official discord which have been absolutely fantastic uh, and I think it also gives me an opportunity just to share a little bit more of of my insight right or my views on things and regardless if people agree or disagree I think it's nice to be able to share and show that we can have um, diverse ways of approaching the game and it doesn't mean that my way is the best or it's the worst just as much as it doesn't mean someone else's is the best or worst right there are multiple roads and ways that lead and can lead to success and for me, it's always the most enjoyable part is being able to see a lot of those, learn about those, uh, and continuing to educate and grow, right, through research um, and through just being informed. With that in mind, that's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. As always, until next time, I will catch you later.